Tonight on KGW News, Florida pummeled by Hurricane Helene as the monster of a storm barrels its way into Georgia. Also tonight, what we're learning about a missing boater as a search on the Columbia turns into a recovery. Uh, outgoing, funny guy, man, real fishy guy, knows he's in this area really well. Then tree troubles in Stumptown, how a homeowner is digging in against the city for something that's not even on his property. And later, everyone kind of like all of a sudden stood up straighter. Everyone was cheering. The two local restaurants celebrating their leap to national fame. Good evening. We'll have the latest on Hurricane Aline in just a moment. But first, a breaking news and a shooting involving Portland police in the Woodlawn neighborhood. Let's get right to Catherine Cook, live near Northeast 17th and Decom with the very latest. Catherine. David, police tell us the suspect is alive. He's being treated at the hospital under police guard for non life threatening injuries. No officers were hurt. This happened around 620 tonight. Members of PPB's tactical team were trying to arrest the suspect as a part of a larger investigation. Detectives called on CERT to help because the suspect was wanted for several violent felonies involving a gun. This photo from police shows the gun he had with him tonight. Investigators say the suspect and police exchanged gunfire. We're told three CERT team members fired their guns, injuring the suspect. Right after that, a CERT team medic tended to the suspect until an ambulance arrived. Again, no officers were hurt. Portland Police Chief Bob Day was here tonight and had this to say. I want to just really express my gratitude to the members of the Portland Police Bureau for their service, for their sacrifice, for their willingness to step in to these spaces on a daily basis. This is a second incident involving um, shots fired with an officer this week. You might remember we had an officer who uh, was uh, shot in the uh, foot this past week in his boot. So the risk is real. The three officers who fired their guns tonight will be placed on paid administrative leave as protocol. Also worth noting footage of the shooting captured by officers body worn cameras. Please tell me that will likely be released to the public in the coming weeks. David back to you. Yeah, Catherine Cook in Northeast Portland on the breaking news. Thank you, Catherine. Also breaking tonight, Portland police on the scene of a shooting in Old Town. This is at Northwest 8th and Cooch, where officers were called just before 9. Authorities say one person has been taken to the hospital with serious injuries. At this point, no word on any suspect or suspects. We will keep you posted. Also new tonight in Clackamas County, the Malala River School District says it is closing all schools tomorrow. That is in response, it says, to a threat posted on social media on Wednesday. The district saying in a message to parents, a middle school student was taken into custody. All activities and athletics indoor and outdoor are also canceled. We will keep you updated as we learn more. Unfortunately, <laughs> We have no control over Mother Nature. All we can do is do the best we can to protect, right? And then basically hope for the best. Hoping for the best as Hurricane Helene tears through Florida's panhandle and now well into Georgia, it has already turned deadly. NBC News reporting one person died in the Tampa area when a sign fell on a vehicle and two people have died in Georgia after an apparent tornado touched down. That's as the monster of a storm made landfall as a category four in the Big Bend region with sustained winds of 140 miles per hour and storm surge described in some spots as unsurvivable. NBC's Jay Gray filed this update from Tallahassee just before the eye of the storm moved on shore. Hey there, good evening. Let's give you an idea of what's going on right now with Helene, a major hurricane and really lashing the western coast of Florida right now. We've seen flooding. We've got more than 700,000 without power at this point, and that storm inching toward the coastline. Sustained winds of 140 miles an hour, and we're still looking to see a major storm surge as this system moves inland. We're talking about what could be a wall of water 20 feet high or higher. The National Hurricane Center saying uh, that this storm surge could be deadly, catastrophic, and another message saying that it's unsurvivable. So water's going to be a serious issue. And of course, with all of these tropical storms, 
uh, these tropical systems, water is the biggest killer. So that's something you've got to watch for. The wind's going to be difficult as well, and it's going to push through this area, Tallahassee, an area that uh, really has a lot of trees spread out across this city. 55% of the city covered with a canopy of trees, and many of those are oaks, uh, oaks that are hundreds of years old. The concern is that wind is going to bring those trees down, bring power lines down along with it. This storm also has some real sustaining power as it moves inland. It's moving so fast, it's going to keep a lot of its energy, a lot of its power. This could still be a Category 1, even possibly Category 2 storm as it pushes into Georgia. Now, FEMA is treating this entire event as a multi-state event. They say that at least six states will be dealing with at the very least, tropical storm winds of nine states or more will be affected by Helene. So this is just the beginning of what's going to be a rough go for millions across the southeast, not only over the next few days, but weeks as uh, teams try and get in, restore some of this power, and move into the areas that are hardest hit. That's the latest right now from Tallahassee. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you. Last I'd seen a million people in Florida alone without power. Now let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Matt Savino. Matt, what is remarkable here is we're not just talking about the coast with the storm, but hundreds upon hundreds of miles inland. Yeah, that's right, uh, David. It is going to be impact much of the southeast four days. Now the hurricane is still a hurricane, but it has deteriorated to a category one. You can watch it spin on shore. Some of the higher wind gusts we saw 84 miles an hour at Cedar Key. That's an island just off the coast here. They also had a storm surge of at least 10 feet and high tide isn't happening till probably about another hour or so from now. So the tide and the surge will still be going up there, but you can see it's spinning rapidly northward and the center is in Georgia. There was just a weather observation near Valdosta, Georgia. Georgia that recorded a gust of 96 miles an hour and even out at the coast at Savannah, they're experiencing hurricane force gusts of 75 miles an hour. So here's the latest on it. It is down to a category one right now. Sustained winds at 90 miles an hour, but gusts still potentially at 160. That's amazing. I've never seen that kind of a spread. Pressure has come up dramatically since it's moved inland, which is typical for a hurricane. So I've put Macon and Atlanta on the map here. Here's where the hurricane is centered right now. And it goes right across those two cities. Still a tropical storm tomorrow morning as it cruises through the metropolitan area of Atlanta. Think about that. You mentioned the millions without power just in Florida. There's likely going to be millions more in the state of Georgia that lose power. Jay Gray talked about the trees. Well, the southern pines that are common down here, that's a softwood. They flex, they bend. But the big old grand oaks that he talked about, those are hardwoods and they don't bend. So when the wind hits those, those big hardwood trees like oaks are more likely to come down. That's really a sad state of affairs there. Now this spins north and then west into Kentucky over the next couple of days. And look at the rainfall forecast here. And these are light. We're going to see upwards of 20 inches of rain here, but another three inches at Atlanta on the way, four inches at Asheville, North Carolina. I saw one report in Florida, a place called Sumatra, Florida, that's already had 15 inches of rain. And of course, it is still raining across the deep south. So you can see this moves north. There's still a circulation center as late as this weekend over western Kentucky. And then it finally, the remains of it will finally push offshore. A couple other things for you, some highlights. Helene up close, this is special high resolution imagery. You can see it moving north. And then the highlights uh, to think about as this goes through the next couple of days. Another 10 to 20 inches of rain in the next two days. Not only will there be widespread flooding, but widespread flash flooding that comes on very quickly. It's hard to defend against because the waters rise so quickly. So this is going to be really problematic for the deep south for a couple days to come, David. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate you putting it all into perspective for us. To get you caught up on tonight's other headlines now, the Hood River County Sheriff's Office says it's found a fishing boat that capsized Wednesday on the Columbia, but the search for a missing boner, it says, is now a recovery. Deputies say he is Michael Schufelt from Woodland. Six other people on board were rescued when the boat sank near the mouth of the White Salmon River. Another guide joined the search efforts and told us this about Schufelt earlier before authorities reported that he is presumed dead. Outgoing, funny guy, man, real fishy guy, knows he's this area really well. Um, I fish with him down in the Woodland area, uh, buoy 10, real good guy, man. Yeah, efforts will continue to recover Shoe Felt's body. 
in Forest Grove, Pacific University is responding to hate speech and violent threats. It says were posted online specifically against members of the Black Student Union. The university says it first became aware of the anonymous posting, which included racial slurs on Tuesday and has reached out to law enforcement. Officials say they are working to identify IP addresses of the person who published that post. And a traffic alert on West Burnside where crews are working on emergency repairs to a water main break. This is on the initial climb up into the West Hills. One westbound lane is closed overnight with the Water Bureau hoping to have things fully reopened by the morning commute. In our homeless crisis, now a cause for celebration at the grand opening of Francis and Claire Place in the Buckman neighborhood, the new permanent supportive housing complex run by Catholic Charities. The 61 unit building is focused on helping people who want and need wraparound services, things like counseling and drug and alcohol treatment. We talked to counselor Duncan Wonga Metro who called the project a regional approach to a shared problem. Oftentimes we see ourselves uh, moving the problem around to different parts of a region, but this is part of that solution where uh, people get the treatment they need and the housing to live in. All well, the state, metro, county, and city all played a role in funding here. Residents were referred by a countywide waitlist and will start moving in next week.